Hello Year 3 and welcome to this week's English lesson. I've really enjoyed reading some of the work that you've been doing in the previous English lessons. For example, I loved reading Charlie's interpretation of the Mr Gum story. I loved how Yasmin and Faith applied Miss Cole's lesson on commas in lists into their writing. And also after Miss Cole's recent lesson on speech punctuation, it was fantastic to receive emails from Philippe, Erin, Evelyn, where they'd done it so well in their writing as well. This week's learning objective is to use a range of fronted adverbials in our writing. A fronted adverbial, as you can probably guess from the word fronted, is something that comes at the front, at the start of a sentence. And it makes our writing very interesting, it makes our sentence starters differ, and also it gives us a little bit of information about what we're about to read as well. Um, this is a key word as well, range. To really impress today, instead of just using one type of fronted adverbial, we're going to try and use three different types as well. And we're going to practice those now in our starter. Now, the three types of fronted adverbial we're going to learn about today and put into our writing, the first one is a fronted adverbial of time, which will tell us when something is happening. So I'm going to leave this up here to help remind us. The second type today is a fronted adverbial of place, which would tell us where something is happening. And the third type is a fronted adverbial of manner, which tells us how something is being done or how someone is acting in that sentence. To get our brains warmed up, we're going to have a look at a few examples and see if you can work out whether they are fronted adverbials of time, place or manner. And I'd like you to get active as well. We're going to have a few actions for each one that I'd like you to join in with at home. When I show you a fronted adverbial, if you think it is telling us when something happens, so it's a fronted adverbial of time, tap your imaginary watch for me. If you think it's a fronted adverbial of place, it's telling us where something is happening, then you can do this action for me. And finally, if you think it's a fronted adverbial of manner, it's telling us how someone is acting or doing something, then maybe you could do this action for me, for how are they doing it. Are you ready? Here are my examples. Here's number one. One morning. Show me which action you think that one should be. Hopefully, you are tapping your watch because that one morning, that's telling us when something is happening. It's happening in the morning. So that's a fronted adverbial of time. How about in the garden? I know Mr. Gum spends a lot of time in his garden. What type is that? Hopefully, you were doing this because that is a front of the verb of place. It's telling us the garden is a place. It's telling us where it happens. I'm going to leave that one up there. How about furiously? I know Mr. Gum does lots of things furiously. Hopefully, you showed us this one to show us that's a front of the verb of manner. That's telling us how someone is doing something. And it's one of those L-Y words that we did in our spelling lesson a couple of weeks ago. So that one can go in the front of the verbial of manner. How about this one? Outside the butcher's shop. See if you can show me, is it front of the verbial of time, place or manner? Hopefully you did this because it's a front of the verbial of place. The butcher's shop is a place, it's telling us where it happened. So that is a front of the verbial of place. Oh, I've dropped a couple. Our next one is without a sound. What do you think to that one? Hopefully you said it's a how, it's a front of a manner, it's telling us how someone did something, it's telling us that they did it very, very quietly. Let's see if I can put it up here without a sound. Here we go. How about this one? Later that day. Hopefully you were tapping your imaginary watch because that's a front of the verbial of time. It's telling us when something happens. And I've got one final one that might really make you think. When he got to the sweet shop. I know Mr. Gum visits a sweet shop during the story. What do you think about that one? Well, that's a really interesting one because it kind of tells us both. It starts with a when, so it's telling us when something happened. It's a front of the verbal of time. But it also tells us where someone is at the sweet shop. So that could be a front of the verbal of time and place as well. I'm going to put it in front of the verbal of time. However, I'm going to leave it close to front of the verbal of place as well because it kind of does both jobs. Okay. So now that we've got our brains warmed up and we know about using that range of front of the verbials, we're going to put, do a little bit of writing today about... 
Mr Gum. We're going to imagine, I'd like to imagine that Mr Gum's gone on a bit of a trek into town. I'm going to use some ideas from the book, but also a few ideas of our own as well to think about a trip that he might go on and how he might act. Probably not in a very nice way. Now, hopefully you remember from year three, if we want to do some fantastic writing, I'm not just going to pick up my pen and start writing. I need to have a real good plan first. And I've got my four faces up here to help me about thinking it first, saying it out loud, writing it and reading it first. I'm going to think about this thinking part first and the plan. And today, to plan my writing about Mr Gum, I'm going to use what's called a story map. I'm going to use some pictures to help me. And you might want to as well. I've already got Mr Gum up here. And I'm going to think about places that he might visit in my story. I'm going to use a mix again of places that I know he visits from the story and also some of my own ideas. So my story is going to start in Mr Gum's garden and I know that's where it starts in the real story as well. I know he keeps it very neat. So you might have a picture of his garden or you might want to draw one on your story map as well. I know that he visits the butcher shop. I've read it in there. Billy William III is the butcher and that's where Mr Gum goes to buy some poisoned hearts to try and poison Poor Jake the dog. I also know that he goes and visits the sweet shop because he wants to make the poison hearts that he bought smell a bit nicer to trick Jake the dog. So I know he goes on a trip to the sweet shop. And finally, this is where I want to innovate it a little bit. I don't want to just go with some from the story. I want to make it my own. So I'm going to imagine, have that little think again about where else could he go that someone might like to read. Ah, I wonder what would happen if Mr Gum visited French. I've got a picture of our school library. I wonder what would happen if he visited there. Maybe he'd go there to read some books about how to poison dogs. Hopefully we don't have any books in the library about how to poison dogs, but he might find some other interesting information. Or he might just rip up all the books because he's kind of like that. So you might want to pause the video now and have your little turn at a plan. Maybe you've got your home learning book or a piece of paper, and maybe you want to start to think about what Mr Gunn might do in your story just like I have, drawing it. You might draw some arrows as well to show the pattern of the story. So he's gonna go from the garden to the butchers to buy that meat. He's going to go from the butchers to the sweet shop. And then in my story, he's going to then go to the French school library. And maybe now you want to pause it, as I said, jot down some ideas, maybe do some fabulous drawings, and then press play again when you're ready to start adding some information. Off you go, good luck. Okay, how did you get on? Hopefully you've got, like me, you've got some nice pictures or some ideas jotted down about where Mr Gum might go in your piece of writing today. Now it's time to have a look back at that learning objective as well. So our learning objective is to use a range of those fronted adverbials, and I've deliberately left them up on the wall over there because they might help us now. So before I start writing in full sentences, I'm going to have a little think and a plan of which front of the verbal I could use with each picture, and that way I can make sure I've got a range as well. So I'm going to start here in the garden. Well, let's have a look up here. Oh, I could start with that one, a front of the verbal of time, that one that went one morning. In fact, I could improve that. I could even put an expanded noun phrase in there to describe the morning. One bright sunny morning. There we go, I'll say it out loud. Time to write it down. One bright sunny morning. I'm going to use blue for this. Blue will be my front of the verbs of time and that way I'll know when I've used all three and I've used a range. So I'll write it up here. One bright, I know I need a comma between my two adjectives, sunny morning and even though I'm not doing full sentences yet I'm still going to put a capital letter at the start and a little comma because I always put a comma after my front of the verbal as well it separates the front of the verbial from the rest of the sentence let's have a look at the next bit in the butcher shop okay well I've used the front of the verbal of time maybe I could use a front of the verbial of place instead where is it well he's at the butcher shop I could use that one let's have a look at what color I'm going to use for my front of the verbials of place. I'm going to use red. So for this one, I could write that he is at, capital letter again, at the butchers. 
Now, because the shop belongs to the butcher, I know that before I add my S on the end, I'm going to need to put an apostrophe, a possessive apostrophe, to show that that shop belongs to the butcher, at the butcher's shop. Okay, what's next? The sweet shop. Okay, let me have a thing. So I've done a front of verbal of time, I've done a front of verbal of place, maybe I can think of a front of the verbal of manner. How would Mr. Gunn go in the sweet shop? I'm going to think back to that spelling lesson with all those wonderful adverbs as L-Y words. Happily, cheerily, that doesn't sound like Mr. Gum. Now I know from the story that actually, Mr. Gum doesn't like the sweet shop because it's got children in, it's full of happiness and he doesn't like that. So actually, I'm gonna use an adverb that describes when someone does something that they don't really want to do. And it's a word called reluctantly. If you're reluctant to do something, you do it, but you don't really want to. So I think that would be a great front of the verbal manner to describe how Mr. Gum goes into the sweet smelling sweet shop. So we can use this purpley colour for my front of the verbials of manner and we look. I'm trying to think back to my spelling lesson. Reluctant, that adjective, well that just ends with a consonant. I don't need to change anything. I can just add my L-Y to finish with. Reluctantly. And then I've got one final one in here, haven't I? The final place he goes in my little piece of writing is the school library. And because this was in the morning, well, he's already been to the butchers and the uh, sweet shop, so it's getting on. So I'm going to put maybe later that day. I'm going to go back again to do another front of the verbal of time that tells me when it's happening. Well, it's happening later in the day, later that day. So just with this one, I'm going to put later that day. And now I'm ready to start doing my writing, maybe put it into paragraphs because I've got a plan here. I know the way my little story is going to go. I know the front of the verbials I'm going to use and I can guarantee because I've used the different ones there that I'm going to use a range of front of the verbials. So now I'm going to write up a bit of a steps to success for us to do some uh, to do our writing activity. Why don't you, while I write the steps of success, pause the video, maybe keep those up as well because they might help you. And with your pictures that you drew of your journey for Mr. Gum, why don't you try and write down four, or as many as you've done, why don't you try and write down your front of the verb? By the way, if you want a helping hand thinking of any front of the verbials, there are loads of fantastic resources and ideas that you can find online as well. For example, here's a word map that I found on twinkle.co.uk, which has got lots of brilliant examples of front of the verbials that you might like to include on your plan as well. So maybe you could have a search online, or maybe even pause the video now if you fancy using some of these. Okay, hopefully you've got lots of examples now on your plan of a range of front of the verbals that you'd like to use when we start to put our ideas into paragraphs now. So here's our steps of success for today. If you want to do the Chili One challenge, you could put in some front of verbals of time and place. Not forgetting that we'll all need to start our sentences with capital letters and end our sentences with full stops. The two chili challenge is to go one step further and put in an even wider range of front of the verbials by putting in some front of the verbials of manner. And also I challenge you to put that comma after the front of the verbial to separate it from the rest of the sentence like all good writers do. And finally, if you want to challenge yourself to do the three chili challenge today, I'd like to see you incorporate some of the things that you've done in previous lessons online. These are two examples from things that Miss Cole has taught. For example, commas in a list, like Faith and Yasmin did so well. Or maybe you could include some speech punctuation in your little story, like Philippe, Erin and Evelyn did brilliantly. So, I'm going to use my plan to help me. I've stuck it up there, and I'm ready. It's my turn now, and I'm going to try and write my first paragraph of when Mr Gum starts his day in his garden. Now, normally, I start by thinking about my front of the verb, but I don't need to because it's there on my plan. One bright sunny morning. But I do need to now say the whole sentence out loud. One bright sunny morning, start with a capital letter. One bright <sighs> comma in between two adjectives. One bright <sighs> sunny morning, <sighs> Mr. Gum, I need capital letters because it's a name, walked or no, strolled 
into his garden, into his neat garden. Full stop. Now it's time to write it. One, I need a capital letter at the start. One, bright. And I know I need a comma between two adjectives. One, bright. Sunny. Morning. And because that's the end of my fronted adverbial of time, I'm going to put a comma with Mr. Gum. I know that needs a capital letter for both Mr. and Gum because it's a name. Strolled. I like not using walked if I can. I think that's a little bit more interesting. Strolled into his. And I could just put his garden. But I think I want to let the reader know what that garden looks like. And I know from the story that actually he keeps his garden very neat. So I'm going to put one bright sunny morning, Mr. Gum strolled into his neat garden. And I know I need to put a full stop at the end of my sentence. Now, before I move on to my next sentence, I know I need to read it back first. I'm going to use that noisy punctuation to check that I haven't missed out any capital letters, full stops or commas. One bright sunny morning. Mr. Gum strolled into his neat garden. I'm happy with that so far. Right, let's have a little think about next. What might happen in his garden? Well, I think he's going to spot Jake the dog. And actually, instead of just saying he spotted Jake the dog, this might be a nice opportunity to use another fronted adverbial. What's he going to be doing? It's as, what time will it be? Well, it's as he looked around. As he looked around, he saw, or he spotted... Jake the dog, and what could Jake the dog be doing, who was rolling around on Mr Gum's flowers. Ah, this gives me a nice chance to use commas in a list because I could list the flowers that Jake is rolling on. Let's have a go. So my sentences are going to start, I need a new capital letter, as he, now I could put, saw, but as he looked, around. That's another front of the verbal of time because it's telling us when it's happened. It's as Mr. Gum is looking around his garden. So I need to put another comma. As he looked around, he, I don't want to put saw, I'll put he spotted instead. Use a synonym. He spotted Jake, which I know needs a capital letter because it's the name. It's a proper noun. And I think his whole name is Jake the dog. So I'm just need a capital uh, Letter for dog as well. He spotted Jake the dog. I'm going to put a comma there. I'm not going to finish my sentence yet. I'd like to go on and use a conjunction and say what Jake was doing. Jake, who was rolling around and this is where I'm going to be able to use my commas in a list because I'm going to list the flowers that Jake the dog might be destroying in Mr Gum's garden who was rolling around on Mr. Gum's. Now these flowers belong to Mr. Gum, so I know I'm gonna to need to put a possessive apostrophe there on Mr. Gum's. Now, what sort of flowers could he have? Daisies, pansies, daffodils, sunflowers, tulips maybe. And I know that if I put them in the list, I don't put and, 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 and. I remember Miss Cole's lesson, I need to use some commas. Rolling around on Mr. Gum's daisies. And then I'll put my first comma. Uh, tulips. And then I'll put another comma because I've still got two more to come. Daisies, tulips, pansies. But this time, the next thing, the next noun, the next flower, is going to be the last one in my list. So instead of the comma, now I'm going to put an and on Mr. Glum's daisies, tulip, pansies, and I'd imagine Mr. Glum would probably have some sunflowers in his garden as well. And then I need to put my full stop. Let's read it back through. As he looked around, he spotted Jake the dog who was rolling around on Mr. Gums, daisies, tulips, pansies, and sunflowers. Excellent, I'm happy with that so far. 
Let's have a look back at the steps of success and see if there's anything else I can add in. I want to really challenge myself today, so I'm going to have a think about this three chilli challenge. Commas and... Ah, speech punctuation. What could Mr Gum now say? Well, I've got a good idea about what he would say, and it wouldn't be very nice. He'd probably shout, Oi! Get out of my garden! To Jake the dog. So I'm going to include that in my first paragraph now as well. Normally I'd start writing here, but I know with speech punctuation that when someone starts to speak, I need to go onto a new line and I need to start with this punctuation here, this 66, this inverted comma. And let me have a think. So Mr. Gummishan, oi, get out of my garden. Need a capital letter for the start. Oi, get out of my garden. And I know that before I finish my speech, I put my other inverted comma, my 99, it always ends with either a comma, a question mark, it's a question, or an exclamation mark. And because Mr. Gunn was probably shouting this, I think the best thing I could put in is an exclamation mark to show how cross he really is. Oi, get out of my garden. I finished there, he stopped speaking. I could put said Mr. Gunn, but I'm gonna put shouted, I'm gonna use a said synonym to make to help the reader understand how he's saying it. Shouted. And do you know what? I could go back to that spelling lesson, those adverbs again, the L-Y words, and describe how he is doing it. And I know that if he's shouting, he'd be doing it angrily. Shouted, Mr. Gum. Now, angrily, the adjective ends with a Y, but I remember that if I want to add the L-Y suffix, I've got to swap that Y for an I before I do it. Let's read that last one with my inverted commas. Oi! Get out of my garden! Woo! That's the noisy punctuation for an exclamation mark. Shouted Mr. Gum angrily. X, I'm happy with that. I've thought about it. I've said it out loud. I've written it. I've checked it. Let's have a look at my step success. Well, I've got it from the verbal of time and I've got three chili but now I think I'm ready to start to move on to the next part of my plan so that was when he went to the butchers and so far I haven't added in a fronted a verbal of place or a fronted a verbal of manner so that will be my next challenge in the next paragraph that I write but now is your turn so I'll pause you can pause the video I'll move out of the way so that the steps of success are there for you to see and don't forget there are some uh, front of verbs up there for you to use as well. Use your plan to help you. And most importantly, when you've written a little bit about Mr. Gum using your amazing front of the verbials, don't forget to email us some of your examples and I'd love to read them through and see what adventures you think Mr. Gum would get up to if you could choose where he went and what he did. Keep up the hard work and I will hopefully see you again soon. Take care and enjoy your writing.